Mercer Bears are coming off one of the greatest basketball years in their history. After doing a little dancing in the NCAA tournament and upsetting one of the greatest coaches of all time, the Bears were riding high. But that was last year, and as every great team knows, nobody cares about last season. I was able to sit down with the man behind it all, Mercer head coach Bob Hoffman, to see his take on basketball, his faith, and the future of the program. What brought you to the game of basketball? Well, uh, it was just an opportunity to be involved with uh, young people and hopefully make a difference in their lives. I pray that, you, you know, some way, somehow, you can make an impact that would change who they are forever. Uh, that's what you go into every season and every individual that you have a chance to coach, you hope that happens. Coach, you're, uh, you're coming into your seventh season as a Mercer head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, six, or you're third all-time in the uh, Mercer wins list. What kind of process goes into that kind of success? Well, a lot of good players, a lot of great assistant coaches, administration that wants you to be successful. I think work ethic and uh, trying to demonstrate to your players that you're going to give everything you possibly can to them, not to mold them into the player that then using all the talents God blessed them with, uh, to stretch them every step of the way, even if they don't want to be stretched, uh, and, and then collectively try to form a unit that's hard to beat in no matter what environment you're going into, uh, where people think that you should never perform to the level that you do, and that's how we've done it over those years, and I think uh, that's a credit to the players. We add a credit to assistant coaches for us to get to that point. Right. Well, you were coming out of um, a good university, uh, looking for a new kind of a head coaching home. You had been a head coach before. Um, so what brought you to Mercer University? Was there any moment uh, in your interview process or any moment where you were just kind of uh, looking through schools that made you say, you know, you wanted to be here, you wanted to be a Bear? I was blessed here that, uh, you know, it, it was a, a good fit. When my wife and I came for our interview, we stayed right on campus, Alumni Center, and uh, we dreamed and walked around and thought, man, this would be a great place to live and, and coach and work and, and left thinking that uh, somehow that would happen. But then as we left and they started interviewing other people, there were some folks that stepped up and had opportunities and it looked like maybe we weren't going to get the job. And then the last second, President Underwood called us on the phone and said, uh, we want to offer you the job, how fast you can be there. And I said, I'll walk as fast as I can. I was in McAllen, Texas at the time. It would have taken us a while to walk, but we ended up flying and getting here that day. We were blessed to get that opportunity, still blessed to be here, and uh, it's a tremendous place. Tenths to go. Mercer has pulled the upset, and Duke is gone. You beat Coach K. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, after that, that was a big win. That was a big win for the university. That was a big win for you and your team. And you guys are obviously feeling pretty good, you know, and you were riding high. Um, but was there ever a moment in the back of your mind where you're like, wow, this is big. Um, you have to be able to replicate this kind of success. Were you ever worried about um, trying to live up to that hype and, and living that success again? No, that's for other people to worry about. We get lost in the day-to-day -day trying to get better, making your players as good as they can be. Uh, that's why we've been successful against a lot of BCS opponents in the past because we enter the game thinking we deserve to be there and we believe we can win. And I, I think it's a mental state of mind about those type of games. If you have guys that walk on the floor uh, feeling good about who they are and what their team can accomplish, then you have a chance to be successful. And uh, there's never a stage too big, I think, for your team. If you grind them and put them in all the tough spots throughout the season and work habits and workouts that gives them the opportunity to be successful. And I think that's, that was a culmination. That game was a culmination of a lot of moments in a lot of tough environments uh, to, to get it done. It wasn't just happened last year. I mean, it was a lot of years and a lot of practice, a lot of individual workouts, a lot of scouting, a lot of recruiting uh, from everybody involved in our program that finally got us to that pinnacle. And we, we actually felt like we didn't do as well as we could have. We felt like we should have won more, or I did. I felt like we could have won more games. And so there's still more out there to be had. Well, I mean, that was a great moment and it'll live for a long time in Mercer history, but we hope we find another one. There was a great moment three years ago when we won the CIT and won at Utah State as something had never been done in the Atlantic Sun, and then we found a way to go to the NIT and beat Tennessee on the road, which we had never done. So we're hoping we can do something this year that we haven't done, and I preferably would like that to be in the NCAA tournament. Right. 
you see a lot of these schools that um, have, you know, the freshmen who come in and you know, they had their one good year, you know, your Jabari Parkers, your Andrew Wiggins. Um, you were talking about the process, you know, all the right. things that went into exactly. the culmination of y'all of y'all beating Duke. Do you see kind of upset wins becoming the norm? Well, it's hard to equate what heart means, and it's hard to equate how hard somebody works. I mean, you might have more talent than me four years ago, but you may choose not to use that talent. You may not work on your game, and I may work every day, and I have a chip on my shoulder that I'm going to prove I'm better than you. And if you get enough guys like that that put in the time and, and work at their talent and their craft, and you have assistant coaches that are grinders and are going to work every minute to try to make your team as good as they can be, then I think you can have that happen. And I think it'll continue to happen. I think it's happened a lot already because there's a lot of great coaches. There's more good players than get rated. Uh, the rating system's kind of, to me, silly. I mean, the top players that can go to the NBA, we all can see them, whether you're a coach or not. But those other guys, that, there's a lot of varying uh, ideas and thoughts when you get from 100 to 300 to 400 who the best players are in the country and then their talents and how they fit a certain system of play and then who can coach them or actually teach them. And that's what I'm blessed with. I have assistant coaches that are teachers of the game. They're not just recruiters. In a lot of Division I programs, they just have recruiters. And so that's why our guys continue to get better while they're here. And I think that's why we always have a chance to go win games we're not supposed to win. Right. Uh, Coach, I was in practice the other day, and I heard you say something. Um, you said championships are won doing what we just practiced, referring to uh, it was free throws at the time, but obviously that, that goes into more. Uh, you said there's a price to pay, and you've got to be willing to work. Um, talk about uh, that more. What is what is that price that you? Have well, to pay? we talk about daily deposits with our guys, and if you don't make a deposit, you can't get a return. Um, and so, if you don't go work on free throws, um, it, sometimes you're going to miss them anyway. But you need to be the best you can be, and that's by daily practicing and feeling comfortable when you get there. Practicing three-point shots, practicing on jump stops, footwork, ball handling. All those things you can control, that's how hard you work and how much time you put in. And if you put those deposits in, eventually you're going to get a return on your investment. And that's what we talk about. That's how champions are made. You, you, not, you're, not, you're not born a champion, in my estimation. You have to work to become a champion, and that's what we talk about with our guys. And, and we've had tremendous, tremendous leadership since I've been here in that area, and that's why we've been able to be successful. Talk about some of the leaders you've had uh, these past couple of years, Coach. You've had... Obviously, you had Langston Hall and uh, some of your other seniors last year. This year, it's kind of been uh, Ike Wamu and you know, mm -hmm. Jerry Bryan. Talk about the seniors that you've had and just the, the general leadership of older guys. Well, it started when I got here seven years ago. Calvin Henry was worked harder than anybody on our team. He, he got hurt in our first game at Belmont. We lost in overtime. We had a chance to win that game. And uh, at that time, they were the measuring stick of the league. Uh, he's playing overseas now, but he, he, he showed great work ethic. He showed James Florence and Daniel Emerson, who became all conference players, how to work. E.J. Kushner, uh, Brian Mills then picked up the mantle and continued to work. And uh, Brian Mills showed Langston Hall and Jake Gollin and uh, all those guys, Bud Thomas, all those guys that finished last year saw. It. So it's been a progression. And that's how you are always your best is when you have your players teaching your players and then the coaches are just the prodders. You're not the ones making them do things, but they're pushing them along and, and they see what hard work and investment does. Brian Mills became an unbelievable player his senior year and it was all because the investment of the players before him that he saw. And now Langston and Jake and all those guys, Ike has been here for several years. He's seen what they've done. Now he's the one working hard as anybody we have in the gym and he's getting return on investment. Jabri's been here four years, he understands that too. Some of our young guys are still trying to figure that out. Coach, let's talk more about your young guys. Um, obviously, you guys beat Duke, and that was huge for the, for the entire program, for the entire university. Um, that brought a lot of media exposure to the university. How has that media exposure helped your recruiting process and bringing in those, those good young players? Well, I think it'll help us going forward because when we call people we don't have to say we're an hour south of the Atlanta airport. I, I haven't said that in a long time. I used to say that on a regular basis when I'd say Mercer University and then even some kids in Georgia would think we were in Atlanta because we have a campus in Atlanta. So I haven't had to say that either. So that's, that's definitely been a blessing. But nationwide, worldwide, when you call and say where you're from, people have an idea and they, they know about you. And that's because of what we were able to accomplish last season. That's been a blessing. Uh, that'll, that was really big for this last class, 2015. 
I think it'll continue to uh, perpetuate itself in 2016 and on. Uh, last year's class was already done by the time that happened, so uh, I, I, think, I think we'll see more dividends uh, in, the, in the years to come. You've, had, you've brought in new guys this year, um, a lot of good guys into the university. Um, you've had guys like Jordan Strawberry who've had to come off the bench as freshmen and you know, make a, an, an impact immediately. How do you feel about those young guys that you have this year and moving forward with this year's team? Well, I love they're great people and they're trying to do the right thing. I sometimes get a little anxious, get a little <laughs> nervous and get on them, uh, thinking they should be a little further along than they are. Um, uh, but a uh, wise man inside of me keeps saying, hey, you know, you need to back off, wait, they're gonna be okay. And, and that's, that's the hard balance be, be, behind knowing where I want them to get to and where they're at and how fast can we get there because I want to be there today. I, I want to win a championship today. Well, we're not playing for one today, but we're trying to get better today. But all those guys have been willing to listen. They're getting better at communicating. Uh, and, and that's a huge part of our success is the ability to communicate. We're not at the level we need to be yet, but we're, we're learning. Uh, a year like you guys had last year, uh, beating Duke, getting in the NCAA tournament, obviously you guys were a little bit of a Cinderella story for a minute. Um, a lot of teams, a lot of universities would like to make uh, a statement run in that, in that area, a lot of bigger schools. Did you ever um, have schools kind of try to spirit you away after kind of making that statement run? Well, I mean, I, there were some people talk to my agent and whatnot, but we were, we were fortunate to be here and we're excited about the vision of the university. Uh, President Underwood's been so supportive. Jim Cole's been great. And I know that they want to have a really good basketball team. And uh, when you have administrators on your side trying to push and do everything they can for you to be successful, and then uh, you, you put all that together with the uh, assistants and uh, players that want to be here and, and just a tremendous university we have to showcase, uh, this is a good place to be and I'm thankful to be here. Coach, uh, let's talk about your relationship with Crisis a little bit more. I mean, you've had a lot of accolades. You know, you've been Coach of the Year several times. You've been with the Atlanta Tip-Off Club. Uh, you've won championships, but you've won uh, a very special award. Um, in 2014, you were you won the Fellowship of Christian Athletes John Lotts Barnabas Award. Um, describe what that meant to you and how your faith uh, factors in your coaching. Well, it was very humbling because you know when you get presented a war like that, you know you don't deserve it, and there's a lot of other people more deserving than you. Uh, but it also makes you think about all the people that impacted your life, that spoke into your life, and gave you wisdom along the way uh, that were really that award should have gone to, those kind of people. And um, it, it, and I, I get a little fiery, as you might have seen um, on the sideline, and get a little juice sometimes at officials and everybody else. but. Uh, I control my tongue and I never use any language and I try not to uh, talk about anybody's mother or you know brother or anything else but try to push them push our players to be the best they can be try to make us all be the best and and try to do it as best I can the way I believe God would do it and I know I fail miserably because I can't reach that perfection but I want to I want to be I want to be the, I want to be the best that I can be every day and hopefully make an impact and a difference in our world. The future of Mercer basketball is fill in the blank. It is championships over and over and over again. That's what we want to be about. We want to be synonymous with Mercer basketball championships, Mercer basketball rings, Mercer basketball banners. That's what we want to do and you want to do it every year. And you never know, uh, every, I mean, every year you got to be ready. Uh, just because maybe you don't win the regular season or you don't uh, win all the games during the season, you got to just win three at the end in the league we're in, and win three in a row to get to go. And uh, I think our team this year will be one of those teams that will have a great chance to win in the end.